Welcome to week 10. Just a quick update. Florida with their big win over number 10, Georgia. Last week uh, is going to jump us for that number one spot, uh, although we did get a big win over Baylor. We uh, don't have any ranked teams on our schedule. We do have Kansas State, so we've only played one ranked team. And uh, as of this point, nobody else is ranked. I think Texas Tech could be jumping into the top 25 pretty soon, but... Uh, Florida has the better strength of schedule by far, and they just got a big top 10 win over Georgia, so they are going to jump us for the number one spot. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update on how recruiting is going overall. Uh, we got some issues. It's not going very well. Um, number one, not able to find a ton of really high-level recruits that are interested. Um, with these two guys, Damian Kaba and Tyler Driscoll, um, Kaba is... Obviously, we're 1,200 points in the lead against Oregon State, which seems like a lot. But he's going to be visiting NC State this week. He's going to be visiting Oregon State in Week 12, and he doesn't get to us until Week 13. And a lot of times with a good visit, a lot of bonus points, they can just instant commit. So we could very well lose him to NC State or Oregon State. And then Tyler Driscoll, same story, kinda. He already visited us in week six, and we're only ahead by 785. And he's still going to Texas A&M in week 13. So there's a good chance we get jumped by Texas A&M and maybe outright stolen you know, from us by them, uh, especially with their uh, deep pockets. So with those two guys, I'm pretty concerned that we might get outbid, basically. Um, with a couple of these other guys, same story here. Um, Jens, Han Jens Hatton is going to Kansas State in week 12 and not coming to us until week 14. Uh, same story here with Shane Costello with UCLA, except we're behind and losing points and they're almost guaranteed to lose this guy. Uh, Jake Garrett, we're gaining on him. Hasn't requested a visit yet, but we're close. Um... Kagan Rayner, we should get. Kurt Cooper is another guy that, you know, Iowa State might be able to steal with a good visit on week 13. Uh, and then we should potentially, he just visited Wyoming, so we got jumped, but we're still in the race, so we should be able to get this guy. Uh, but, you know, long story short, we could very well end up not getting half of these guys, and then all these points that we spent on them for the past, you know, eight plus weeks are totally wasted. Not to mention there's not really a backup plan because we don't have a ton of other options in the pool. So pretty concerned with recruiting at this point, but you know, we're just gonna stick with it and just end up just see what ends up happening. Guys, I gotta be honest with you, I messed up on this one. I uh, got almost all the way through the first quarter and realized I didn't hit record. Um, so I'm gonna catch you up here. Here's some highlights from the first quarter. We um, Stopped them on a fourth and one on this play here um, on their first drive. Got the ball back, drove down the field. Here's a couple of plays from that drive, but we did end up scoring on a um, Parker Jenkins run inside the 10-yard line. And then after that, uh, we did force a three and out, got the ball back, went down the field uh, in just a couple of plays, ended up getting a big pass that you'll see here in a minute to uh, Dalton Carnes for a touchdown. So, apologize for missing out on those highlights, but hopefully this is, um, actually it was uh, CJ Nelson on the deep pass right there. Um, but yeah, missed out on those highlights, but we're going to pick it up here at the end of the first quarter. So, third and two for Oklahoma State on their next drive. They get stopped for a loss of five, and we're going to get the ball right back here to start the second quarter. First and ten. Driving the ball down the field, finds Carnes on the flag route. He's going to get into the end zone for 25-yard touchdown pass. Coley's already at 135 yards, two touchdowns. Second and 10 for Oklahoma State. Run outside to Nixon. He misses a tackle, breaks a tackle there. He's got a lot of space to run. Can Gaston get him? No, but he does get shoved out of bounds. Big 50-yard run there for Oklahoma State. Third and 15, Flores drops back. He goes down for a loss of eight. It's going to be fourth down. They take the field goal, 21-3 here late in the second quarter, trying to get the score here before they uh, so they don't get the ball back, but end up having to settle. Or no, we don't settle for a field goal. We end up going for it. Coley's going to throw it to Compton, and he gets picked off. Uh, so really, 
you know, it ends up being the same result as an incomplete pass on fourth down, so not a huge deal. Third and 11 for Oklahoma State. Flores finds Bruce the fourth, but he's going to go down short of the first down. We're going to call a timeout here, try to make something happen with 15 seconds left. Last play of the first half, deep pass down to Carnes, and that one's going to be picked off as well. So a couple of interceptions there at the end of the second quarter, but luckily neither of them really had any consequences. So 21-3 to here at halftime. Solid first half for our team. Sorry you only got to see half of it, but... Uh, first and 10 on our next drive play action pass to Compton over the middle not a ton of crazy highlights in this one a lot of me me short to medium runs here's a big run for Jenkins up the middle gets down to about the five but thought I'd throw in a couple of um, you know decent pass plays I wouldn't normally uh, put in there Coley can't find anybody he scrambles goes up the middle gets in for the seven yard touchdown run it's gonna be 28-3 Third and one, next drive for Oklahoma State. Handoff on the end around to Green. He cuts it back up field and gets the first down. Seven yards on the play. Third and six, Flores drops back. He's going down once again. Our defense came to play today. They uh, wanted to get that revenge from last year. Jenkins on the handoff up the middle. Gets about 12 yards there. That's going to be a first down. 100 yards on the day already here in the four, in the third quarter. Find Manjack on that third down play for uh, first down late in the third quarter. Um, uh, Coley went down with a uh, mild concussion. He's going to be out for the rest of the game, but Ale does get the pass complete there. Not going to be a first down. We're going to have to settle for three. Uh, first and ten next drive for Oklahoma State. Flores throws it into traffic, and Emery's going to get the pick. Just uh, under seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter. We get the ball back. Hand off to Jenkins on the outside. He gets a bunch of key blocks there. Gets down to about the 10-yard line. It's going to be first down. Third and seven. Ollie running out to the right, trying to find somebody. He can't find anybody. He's going to be pushed out. And this is going to be fourth and 13. We're going to take another field goal here. 34-3. First and 10 for Oklahoma State. They're trying to mount a miraculous comeback here. They get 14 yards on the play, gets the first down, and uh, they're driving the ball down the field. Screen pass to Nixon. He breaks a tackle, going down the right sideline, hurdles the defender, gets down inside the five. It's going to be first and goal. Next play, handoff to the fullback. Stewart's able to run it in, so it's going to be 34 to 9. Um, they do take the one point. On the onside kick, I couldn't figure out what happened here. I had to go to the replay, but uh, it started off hitting our guy in the face. He doesn't catch it. And then, as you'll see here, the Oklahoma State player appears to use the force. Some sort of telekinesis. Our guy kicks it, and then it floats up into his hand. And then he immediately drops it in celebration, which was what confused me in the first place. But Oklahoma State gets the ball. Weird. I don't know if it's a bug or what, but weird play there. Uh, big pass down the middle of the field, breaks a tackle. He gets in the end zone for a touchdown. So all of a sudden, they're going for two here. He's going to get it, but at what cost? What a hit. It only cost him the uh, physical integrity of his spine, but he does get the two points there. So it's going to be a 16-point game. Ale, first play of the drive after getting the onside kick. He takes it all the way to the end zone. Uwe with the 54-yard touchdown run. What a play there. First and goal, Flores drops back, finds Bruce over the middle on their next drive. That gets six points. They're going to go for two again. This time, Nixon not able to get in. So it's going to be 41-24. We get the ball back on the onside kick, and uh, we're able to run the clock out. So that's going to be the final score here, 41-24. Sorry, sorry again about the issues in the first quarter, but, um, yeah, pretty, pretty solid win. We kind of had it all the way, just let them score 21 points in the fourth quarter. But other than that, I think we did a great job in this one. So here's your stats. We still had 100 yards more than they did. Um, we have more turnovers, um, which is, you know, almost par for the course at this point. But solid win for our team.
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the top 25 matchups here for week 10. Miami takes down Oklahoma 44 to 41. Uh, they're at number 18. They're going to jump up some spots here with that win. I can't quite figure out what actually happened here. Uh, the score down at the bottom says Virginia 36, Louisville 30. At the top, you see it says 42-17 Louisville. If we go into the game summary, it says Louisville won 42-17, but I don't know what their record was previously. Let's look at their can we look at their schedule. Yeah, on their schedule it says they lost 36 to 30. Um, so I guess Louisville got upset. BYU gets the win over Utah. They're going to go to eight and one, and they are still undefeated in conference play. So. They are definitely number one on the other side of the Big 12. In overtime, number eight, Michigan is going to get the win over Michigan State, 26 to 20. Navy gets a big 37-20 win over number 25, Notre Dame. They're going to go to seven and one. Number 12, Oregon is going to fall to Illinois, 24 to 14. I'm not sure how Oregon is still at number 12 at, I guess, previously four and three. And lastly, we've got another insane one here, and I don't know how many overtimes. I guess that would be three overtimes. Looks like Georgia uh, falls to Arkansas 60-58 to in three overtimes. Uh, Arkansas, a team that lost to Georgia three times last year, maybe twice. Uh, definitely in the SEC Championship and in the playoffs, so Arkansas gets their revenge here in a big three overtime game. And that's going to do it for our top 25 matchups here in week 10. Let's go ahead and advance to week 11. Still no commitments this week. Starting to get concerning, but we do um, still have these guys sort of interested. So, again, we'll keep an eye on it. And that's going to do it for week number 10. Uh, we are going to pick up in the next video uh, on the road against number 24, Texas Tech. They're at 7-1. Still undefeated in conference play, so this game could very well determine who goes to the Big 12 championship. So definitely tune in next week for that one. We will see you there.